Things going from the unseen world into the seen world. Hallelujah. And we'll start out with the first scripture in Romans chapter 4, verses 16 through 17. Therefore, gosh, isn't that amazing? The promise comes by faith. Duh. The promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring. Not only to those who are of the law, but praise God also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. Hallelujah. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Notice that's past tense what he was telling him. It's already done. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. This is who we believe, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. And then through the blood of Jesus, our heavenly father has said, now I give you the same thing. You call dead things alive and they'll come alive. You call things that be not and then they will be. This is who we are on the earth. That's why we're the salt of the earth. We're the preservative and we are going to start doing that more and more, the body of Christ at large, particularly here at Words of Life Church. And then our, the body of Christ is going to turn into the church without spot or blemish. And then Jesus is going to come. So we're not going to sit back and say, oh, look what the devil is doing. I don't care what he's doing. We have dominion over him. And uh, it's not going to work out the way that he thinks. If you're listening to anybody who is trying to change your mind or think a certain way because of fear, just forget that. This is not the way that God does things. The devil can't do anything to you in the absence of fear. Just like God can't do anything for you in the absence of faith. Believe God for the best. You get what you're expecting. In fact, if you expect the promises of God... It'll be even greater than what you expect because he's able to give exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask, think, or expect. Hallelujah. But the problem is, or what we got to deal with, is that we all live in this natural three-dimensional world. We're raised in it. We go about our daily lives, relate to this physical world. In virtually everything that we do, we eat, sleep, work, play in this three-dimensional world of the natural to the degree oftentimes that the unseen realm seems unreal. But the truth is there's more that exists in the unseen spiritual realm than exists in this natural physical realm. Not just more, but much, much more than that. In fact, nothing can appear in the natural world unless it was first created in the unseen spiritual realm. <clears throat> so let's look at some scriptures that illustrate this point in 2 Kings chapter 6. For the sake of time, I'll paraphrase a little bit and get us set up and then we'll read a couple of scriptures. In that particular chapter, it tells us that the children of Israel were engaged in a battle against the Syrians and through the power of God, the man of God, Elisha, he was able to see into the unseen world and hear the voice of God. And he was given away the secrets of the Assyrian battle plans to the Israeli army at which way, you know, the Syrian army was going to attack, what was their method and all that. And after a few uh, failed attempts, uh, for Syria in battle, the king, he was a little uh, ticked off about all this. And he uh, was informed that there was this prophet giving away their secret battle plans to Israel. So he was like, you bring me that prophet. And so he dispatched an army of soldiers to go bring Elisha to him. And when Elisha and he had his servant Gehazi with him, they got up early the next morning. They were completely surrounded by the Syrian army. In fact, the whole city of Dothan was surrounded by a great uh, 
host of Syrians with horses and chariots and weapons. And let's, uh, let's see what the word says in verses 15 and 16. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, no, my Lord, what shall I do? The servant asked. And here's what he said. Don't be afraid. You notice that? Fear not if you read King James. You see that in the Bible a lot, don't you? Well, that's good advice for us because we're going to see things and it's going to look like we're surrounded. Have you ever watched the news? But don't be afraid. That's the whole strategy of the enemy, to get you afraid so that it gives him an open door to kill, steal, and destroy. Job said, the thing I greatly feared came upon me. So what if you don't fear anything? None of that stuff can come upon you, praise the Lord. So Elisha said, don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Praise God. So Gehazi, his servant, probably didn't understand what Elisha meant until Elisha then prayed and asked God to open the young man's eyes. Not his natural eyes. He was already seeing with that. They were, those were already open, but his spiritual eyes or the eyes of his faith. Verse 17. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes. And he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Praise the name of the Lord. So the angels of heaven were right there to protect and deliver the man of God. Do you know they're around you too? You just can't see them with your natural eyes. Uh, and what this shows us is there's more in the spiritual unseen realm than there is in this natural physical world. And the way that we're able to see it and transfer it from one world to another, duh, by faith, praise the Lord. So you see, the mind, when it's informed only by carnal human vision, is blind to spiritual things. Some people are informed solely by the world around them that they can see. And guess what happens when you do that only? It's going to cause fear, anxiety, even hopelessness. And if you think about it, that's what's going on in the world today. All the devil has to do is say, oh, I've, I've put out this pandemic. And oh, it's got this. It's got, no matter what it is you're interested in, there's something to be afraid. Oh, the stock market's going to go down or whatever. Just get enough fear going on and then get some people to just lie over and over. And uh, he can do what he wants. Well, it's time for us to say, no, devil, you're not getting your way. God's going to have his way. You're going to lose again for the one millionth or one billionth time. The Bible tells us believers we're not supposed to live that way. Do you know whatever you can see with your, with your eye is not going to last? Everything you see, these chairs, this carpet, the speakers, the cameras, your clothes you're wearing, the body that I could see. That ain't, that's not going to last. What does last is what you can't see, the promises of God. Hallelujah. They'll last forever. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 5, 7, just so you'll see it in the word. For we walk by faith and not by sight, not by natural sight, but that we see the... Uh, the promises of God. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You're going to have to believe things you can't see with your eyes. That's what faith is. Now, to notice it is evidence. It's the substance of things, the evidence of things not seen. Y'all like to watch uh, whodunit type shows? That's Sandy and I's favorite we like to see one, a good whodunit. Well, they, they always have evidence, you know, like fingerprints. What does that mean? Well, it means that something real 
a real person was there. It's evidence of something real. So that's what faith is. It's the evidence of real promises. There has to be a promise that's real in order for it to be evidence of it. Praise the Lord. And so uh, another illustration of abundance that already exists in the unseen realm is when Jesus fed the 5,000 men plus the women and children. Now, a lot of the uh, assumptions a lot of people have is that these loaves and fish were created right on the spot, just in time. You know, oh, the people were hungry, so Jesus says, okay, let's make that. No. Or how about when Abraham would sit up the mountain to offer up Isaac? Maybe uh, the ram, just God just created the ram right there in the bush as a substitute for Isaac. No, no way, Jose, contraire, Pierre. That's not how the kingdom of God works. That's not what happened. This is how people think who don't have a revelation of the unseen world or know how faith works. God created them, all right, but had created them thousands and thousands of years before this time of need, before the foundation of the world. Do you know that um, everything you'll ever need or want has been created and waiting for you since before the foundation of the world. God knew you back then, and he waited for this particular time. You were born into the natural, into this world, for such a time as this. You must be pretty important because these are important times. And God knows you. He knows exactly your talents, your abilities, your personality, and he knew that you had something that no one else has. And now is the time for you to be here and put those things to work for the kingdom of God. He knows every opposition you're going to get because he's not bound by time. And so he already has waiting in advance the answer to every situation, every problem, every tribulation, stumbling block that will be placed there. He's got the answer waiting on you to call for it so it'll move from the unseen spiritual realm into this natural three-dimensional world where it will bring glory and honor to his name and enable you to fulfill your kingdom destiny. Hallelujah. Abraham called that place where uh, God... The, the ram moved from the unseen world into the seen world. He said it was Jehovah Jireh, which means the God who sees ahead and makes provision. God has seen ahead and made provision for everything that you need. The healing of your body, the finances you need, all kind of things that I couldn't even imagine to tell you. He knows exactly. He knew before the foundation of the earth that that pipeline, they're going to have to do a new pipeline through here. He wasn't caught by surprise. He was just looking to see maybe if uh, we were going to get all in fear or not, if that thing could be released or not. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter uh, 1, verse 3. According as his divine power, past tenth, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Everything that you'll ever need for life and godliness has already been given to you, past tense, by God. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again, already done it, unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and brought us into an inheritance. Oh, when we get to heaven in the sweet by and by, no, we don't need all that stuff there. It's all our troubles are over when we get to heaven. Where we need that is here on the earth. He's already given it to us and waiting for us to call for it so that we could walk in and on the earth in an inheritance. It's incorruptible. No one can take it away. It won't, you know, moths and rust can't, uh, you know, use it up. And thieves can't break in and steal. That's not for when you're up. It's in heaven, 
but it's for us here when it moves there. It's got your name on it. It's undefiled. It won't fade away. Reserved in heaven for you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So, <clears throat> it's reserved in heaven for you. It's not for, you don't need it when you get up there. Everything is good. There are no problems. And, but God knows what the problems are going to be here. He's already been there because he's not bound by time. Just like he said to uh, Abram, I have made you, I've already made you the father of many nations. Why? Because he was there when Abraham was actually doing it. And there was Isaac and Jacob and so on. And he went back in time and said to Abram, I've already made you the father of many nations. Hallelujah. God's already given you everything that you'll ever need or want for life and for godliness. It's in the unseen realm, reserved in heaven for you. And you call it into this realm by calling things that be not as though they were. And declaring and decreeing things. And they, they yeah, they move now, but they've been in reserve before the foundation of the earth. Here's a way you can understand the concept. First, realize God's not subject to time. He exists in the eternal realm. Time is a creation of God. He created everything seen and unseen. Let's look at Isaiah 46.10. Declaring the end from the beginning. He's at the beginning he could say what's going to be at the end because he's not bound by time. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. He's not caught by surprise. He has the answer, the provision, everything you need waiting on you, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. And that means you could, the circumstances can be bad. It could look impossible. Oh, we're surrounded by the army. Or Joseph in the inner prison. He gets up in the morning. I, don't, I can't tell you the last time he had a shower or a bathe. His beard down to I don't know how long. Stinky, hairy, and with no place to go. Uh, down in the inner prison, that's how the morning started. By the afternoon, he was standing in front of Pharaoh, all cleaned up, shaved, with new robes, a ring on his finger, and Pharaoh saying, I'm putting you in charge of the whole world. Nobody will do anything unless they run it by you first. Hallelujah. There's going to be some suddenlies in your life. The God, it, it, things are looking like they're bad. There's no hope, but there's going to be a move of God. Call forth that thing that God has already provided and waiting, reserved in heaven for you into this earth and suddenly things are going to change and people are going to know that your God is the one true God and his name is Jesus. Can I have an amen? So God does not age. God is not old. He's not an old man with a long white beard with a big club in his hand waiting on you to make a mistake. That's not who God is. A thousand years to God is as a day and a day is as a thousand years. Here's what I'm saying. Whatever God is going to do for you and me, he's already done. That's why Jesus said, it is finished. That's why the Bible says, now faith is. <clears throat> you hear people say, well, you never know what God's going to do. Yeah, I do. It's in his word what he's going to do. The, what we don't know is how he's going to do it. So don't tell God how to do it just thank him and agree with what his word said he's gonna do and apply it by faith to your life that promise is for me I'm born again you've been made righteous by God the power of God and you into the family of God with privileges and an inheritance incorruptible that will not fade away reserved in heaven for you to use on this earth 
So call things that be not as though they were. It's already written in the Bible what God's going to. In fact, it's already done. That's why he told Abram, you're going to be Abraham and you, I've already made you the father of many nations. Secondly, know that faith is always in the now. When you're in faith, you're in agreement with heaven's reality. Isn't that right? Where everything, but the reality is, according to the word, everything is already done, finished, and completed. You're not going to go up to heaven. Where's my mansion? <clears throat> oh, they're still under construction. See that framework and everything? No, it's already done. Hallelujah. He, he knows who's coming and who's not. Faith has no time what I'm saying. It's always in the now. Now faith is. If you use anything other than now, you're not really in faith. If you're uh, in faith, you wouldn't say, someday God is going to heal me. That's not going to work because it'll always be, you'll get what you say. It'll always be someday. Because that places it in the future, and faith is always in the now. And as far as God's concerned, you're not telling the truth. The truth is, by his stripes, you are healed. Now, faith can work. Hallelujah. And for Abraham to get the promise of God to manifest in his life, he had to call things that be not as though they were. He couldn't talk future and manifest a promise that's already done, and neither can you and I. Your healing, your new house, your, your car, your sales contracts, your, that husband you're believing for, or whatever, all of that done before the foundation of the world. You're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. You know, I heard that God is a, he's a really good checker player. When it's your move, he waits. Abraham had to speak words of faith. He had to speak in the present tense as though what God had promised was completely done already. Hallelujah. And he didn't rely on his flesh to decide if the promise would or could be manifested. Let's look at Romans 4, 19 through 21. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. And when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. In the natural, it ain't going to work. But he already had, God had said, I've made you past tense, the father of many names. So he didn't look at that. He didn't look at the things that were seen. Hallelujah. He had his eye just like it said about Moses. He saw him who was invisible. And this is what Abraham did. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to also to perform. The Bible is full of the promises of God for his family members, praise the Lord, his children. And he is certainly able to perform every one of those promises. We just need to just don't stagger at those promises. Don't look, go by what we see with our natural eyes. Go look at the unseen promises of God. And when it's in action, you don't see, oh, look at the promise, run over here. No. But we see the manifestation of it when by faith, the answers, the victory, the provision, and moves from the unseen world into this seen world. Abraham was operating independently of his circumstances and his natural abilities. Too many Christians today give the word of God second place in their lives and their paychecks or their bodies first place. But if God intended for us to live by the limitations of this natural world, he would have never given us faith. But he's given every man the measure of faith. And well, what is that? That's enough faith to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins and make me brand new. And from there, it's just like everything else. Sowing and reaping is the main 
principle all the others hang on. Then you take the faith that you have and you sow it. You put it to use and it'll come back with increase. Now you can believe for a little bit more and you put that to use and your faith grows and grows till finally you'll stagger not at the promise of God through unbelief. But you'll be fully persuaded that that which God had promised, he's also able to perform. Hallelujah. Faith takes us above the limitations, time, space, matter, and gives us dominion over all the earth and over all the creation of God. Hallelujah. The only thing we can't take dominion over is other people made in the image of God. But everything else... We take dominion over it. Hallelujah. You notice what the devil's plan, this new world order and all that, people want to take dominion over other people. That is ungodly. It is totally against the kingdom of God. We need to take dominion over their plans, not them. We still love them. Ooh, that's hard, Pastor David. Well, think about this. Jesus died for them. He loves them. So... Because we love Jesus, we have to love them, but we don't love what they do, and we stop what they do through the words by believing the promise of God in our heart and declaring it with our mouth. And we resist it, and we say, no, devil, you're not having our country. You're not taking away our freedom, and you're not taking away the freedoms of other people. We stand in the gap and tell you to cease and desist in the name of Jesus. Before Abraham changed what was seen, and received the promise, he had to change the image that was on the inside of him. You may have to start seeing yourself as who God says that you are instead of what a man or a woman or someone else in a a natural authority says you are. God thinks that you're beautifully, fearfully, and wonderfully made, and he made you righteous, and you are entitled to your complete inheritance, and every promise to the righteous in the word of God belongs to you, if you'll lay hold of it. And this is what Abraham did, and he did it by calling things. What things? The things that God had promised. Faith was released, and then it brought the promise into the manifestation, into this natural world. So as we speak and we meditate what God has said, our hearts become full of of assurance. We become strong in faith, fully persuaded that what God had promised, he's able to perform or bring it to pass. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 4.18. This will be our last scripture. While we look not at the things which are seen. Isn't that what we've been saying? Don't look, go by what you see. Because that might not be a pretty picture. Now, do, do we ignore it and say, well, it's not. A re-? Yeah, that's what's going on in the natural. But we have the supernatural. Super means above. Has dominion over. So we don't look at the natural things. Why? But rather we look at the things which are not seen, the promises of God. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, subject to change. Everything that you see in the natural, every problem that you see, every situation that you see with your eyes, it is subject to change because it is temporary. And how long it stays there is how long it takes you to call things that be not as though they were. But instead of uh, trying to see those things that are just temporary, instead, get your eyes on the things which are not seen because they are eternal. The temporary things you see have to change because the Word of God will not. It is eternal. And it has dominion over everything else. Hallelujah. The word of God will never fade away. Hallelujah. And so we lay hold of that. And that's the way it works. And then things move from the unseen uh, spiritual realm into this seen world. And you see it. And then not only you see it, but others around you can see it. And they will say, you tell them, 
I am believing God. This is the promise of God, and this is what I'm looking at, and this is what I have my eyes on, because there's more for me than against me, and those things that are against me have to change because the promise of God has been released into my life by faith. And then when they see the miracle working power of God and that you, a normal person like them, maybe someone that you work with and, uh, you know, you're not the brother or sister, double right reverend so-and-so, which won't make any difference in that. You either have faith or you don't. But they'll say, man, if it works for them, it might work for me. Tell me about your God. And you could tell them, I got good news. It's for whosoever will. Hallelujah. We'll call on the name of the Lord could be saved. And all the promises are there for whosoever will receive them. It's like you have an inherit. Someone hears a billion dollars and it's in the bank, but you never write a check on it. It's never going to benefit your life. So start writing checks on the inheritance that you have, that means everything that you'll ever need or want, to do, things that you need to fulfill your kingdom destiny and be blessed to be a blessing. They are there waiting for you, reserved in heaven with your name on it. They can't fade away. They, they can't be diminished. They're there waiting for you. They've been there since the, before the foundation of the world. I think they're going to be there today and tomorrow. Can I have an amen? And so, take this to heart. God has said, you're going to get some faith today. Let the anointing flow. Receive it, hallelujah, that your life will never be the same. And uh, you might want to read uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 18 every day. How long would that take? It takes about, what, 10 seconds or less? Praise the Lord. So, I'm going to pray for you. And then we will be uh, released. If you have a particular thing you want me to get into agreement with you, I'll be down here for a little bit. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have seen ahead and made provision. You are Jehovah Jireh. I thank you, Lord, every problem that we have, you've made the provision already. You have the answer waiting. And so now by faith, we call them in to this natural world in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that the thing that uh, it causes the most uh, doubt, the most anxiety or fear, we reject all fear in Jesus' name. And by faith, we call the, your promises into our life in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for a sudden change for the better in our life in Jesus name just like one moment I was like where are we going to get the money the next moment I'm reading the email give me a call this is the money we want to give you and I thank you Lord that things like that are going to happen to every one of us now we receive them by faith in Jesus name help us to see the promise that we need to believe and declare, and that, Lord, we'd be looking for it. We'd be expecting it. We're fully persuaded that that which you've promised, you're able also to perform and bring it to pass. And we give you thanks in advance for it before we see it, because we don't see it with our natural eye. We see it with the eyes of our faith. And we thank you for it and count it already as done in Jesus' name. And all the people said in agreement, Amen and amen.